What's going on everybody? It's Jace and today we're going to be covering a couple of important reasons why the sneaker market and its prices aren't going to go down anytime soon. Stay tuned for all that and more in this video. And if you are new to this channel, my name is Jace. I drop new videos every Thursday regarding investments, finance, sneakers, and design all on this channel. So if that sounds interesting to you, please do consider subscribing and liking the video today. Stick around. So now I want to start off by talking about one important point, which is going to be the fact that it is currently and more or less always will be a seller's market for the sneaker market. And the seller's market is a common term that is used in real estate pretty often. And that really just describes a situation where the amount of demand exceeds the number of homes there are available for purchase. And we're definitely constantly seeing that in the sneaker market as well, where there is never enough stock to go around to meet the demands of all the people. And just to continue building on this point, if you aren't into real estate, the one thing you need to know right now is that because it is a seller's market, you are seeing homes that are listing for, let's say 500,000 and they're selling for anywhere from 50 to 100 to 200 to even $300,000 over that listing price. And similarly with sneakers, we have been seeing this trend for at least a couple of years now, at least a lot more, which is where you're seeing a lot of these sneakers retail for $100, $170 and they're reselling for you know, 5X, sometimes even 10X that price. If you wanna see a video on the criteria that I look for when I invest in sneakers, do watch my criteria video, which I'll link below. So the first term I wanna bring up that has to do with what I just explained is gonna be market value. And that's really just what the market determines is the worth of the sneaker. If you've seen the Chunky Donkeys, they retail for, I think it was 120, and now they're going for over $1,200 to $1,500 and even more if it comes with a special edition box. And a lot of this has to do with unseen forces and that is really another basic economic principle which is called the invisible hand. And there's all these unseen forces that basically influence the final price of this product. So in terms of sneakers, it could be demand, it could be trends, it could be popularity. So I've explained the first part of why sneakers won't go down in price. So now the second part I wanna talk about is how this can be combated or how it can be dealt with. The first big method to deal with this is going to be to stop paying resale. I see people complain so often online about, oh, resale prices are ridiculous, sneaker market is jacked right now, culture is dead, it's all about the money now. But these are the same people that are supporting the actions of these resellers. There's people out there that are essentially ruining it for everybody else. You know, when you have people that are okay with paying 500, 700, 1000, $10,000 for a pair of sneakers, then you start setting the precedent that it's okay to sell sneakers at this price and there is a demand for a sneaker at this price. And that's what's gonna happen is resellers are gonna start taking note of this. And then next thing you know, you have this wave and you're starting this new trend of selling sneakers for way above market. And I wanna emphasize this point one more time by saying that when you pay for something with your money, you're basically voting in favor of whatever that is. So if you're willing to pay $500 for a pair of dunks, you're basically telling everyone, hey, I'm totally cool with spending $500 right now. So really for this first point, it's totally up to the buyers to stop supporting this activity if they don't want to pay resell anymore. But I can't really see that happening because there's always going to be the argument that there's going to be some people with super high amounts of disposable income that are going to just buy whatever they want. And likely there's also a lot of people that are very financially irresponsible and are going to spend you know their whole paycheck on a pair of sneakers. So you always have to think about all these different types of people out there that are going to prevent this from happening, which is why I don't think the resale market is ever really going to truly die. You can look at a lot of other products too. Like people have been reselling uh, cards forever, Yu-Gi-Oh cards, Pokemon cards. It's become really trendy recently, but I mean, even back in the day when I was in middle school, I used to flip Yu-Gi-Oh cards. It's, it's nothing new. Like reselling is always going to be a part of 
anything that is inherently collectible. The second point about why the resale market is never really going to die is the fact that it is a seller's market. Nike intentionally does not want everyone to have their hands on their products. So they do have this scarcity model built into their business. I talk, I talk about this a lot because it is one of the major key factors in the reason why you're probably not able to copy sneakers and the reason why sneakers are so expensive in general on the secondary market. So unless Nike decides to produce more stock, which again is not really likely because this, that is literally part of their marketing. It's part of their business model. It's the way they roll out their products. They don't want everyone to have their hands on it. This in turn drives demand, causes people to want more of their product. So they don't really have a reason to help the customers in that regard. And kind of getting more into Nike's strategy too. One of the big things they like to do is they like to constantly search for new influencers to push their products. So what I mean by that is usually they'll sponsor them and send them free product. And they're pretty much in an agreement where it's like, hey, you have to you know, take photos with our product. You have to promote our product and our brand. But in turn, we'll hook you up with all these cool, fancy sneakers. And that's really, that's really kind of what it is because a lot of these influencers, they are influencers and they have huge followings full of people that are either super gullible or they want to live that same lifestyle or people that are super financially irresponsible and will literally blow their whole paycheck just so they can buy a wardrobe that looks like their favorite influencer. And like I said, this all in turn turns the cogs at Nike and really helps them continuously upgrade and build their brand onto another level. So in summary, the reason why the reseller market is never really going to die or never really going to go away is because companies like Nike, Adidas, and many other companies that are starting to get more into this trendy sneaker collecting type hype is because one, they control the consumers and how they consume. And there is this issue of overconsumption as well, which I'll cover in a different video. But a lot of the people that want these sneakers, they are super into trends and they'll follow these influencers. So Nike is contributing to that problem. And not only that, but they also control all the supply. So they are in effect creating their own vicious cycle that everyone is essentially trapped in. So if people truly want the reseller market to die or for it to go away and for the uh, sneaker culture to come back and the sneaker market to go back to, to normal levels, there's going to be a lot of effort that needs to be put into this. And a lot of people are going to need to either boycott Nike and stop paying resale, which, like I said, it's hard for you to gather that many people to do the same thing because everyone has their own interests. You know, these, these wants and needs, it's much deeper than just some of these tendencies are almost at a primal level. So, you know, usually people want something, it's very hard for them to convince themselves that they should hold off and not get that instant gratification. All right, everybody, that's the video. So let me know what you all think about the situation. It's been Jace. Like I said, I upload new videos every Thursday regarding investments, finance, design and sneakers on this channel. So make sure that you like, subscribe and ring that bell notification so you get new updates from every Thursday. As always, take care and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.